Governor Tim Pawlenty, former Republican governor of Minnesota, author of the book Courage to Stand, an American Story. And, of course, we saw him at the debate the other night, and we're delighted he's with us. Governor, how are you? I'm doing just great, Laura. Good morning to you. So now we know that, look, you know, the the recovery is happening, and you all can do your politics, but the president's just going to be uh, busy focusing on getting business done at home. Yeah, that's really working for him in the nation, isn't it? Uh, you know, he ran last time, he, last summer, this wasn't this summer, but a year ago it was going to be the recovery summer. And uh, how was your recovery summer going? Are you using the extra SPF to ward that off or to make sure you're uh, in, in line with that, Laura? Yeah, the rec- <laughs> I, I I think we need to we need to recover from the recovery summer. That's the problem. We never we never had a recovery in the first place. It wasn't meaningful. It was another PR campaign waged by the by the war room at the White House, and we were supposed to be lulled into this passive approach to c- combating what they were doing. And and lo and behold, nothing happened. And yeah, and right. and we are we are where we are now. I want to play for you a soundbite, Governor. Uh, This was Mike Huckabee on my show a few days ago after the debate uh, in New Hampshire, uh, and you're specifically talking about your performance. Let's listen. The number one thing, and and I'm going to go back to my friend Tim Pawlenty, he needs to get rid of some of his consultants. I saw this with Romney four years ago, and I'm seeing it with Pawlenty now. Overcoached, overconsulted, get rid of him. What's your uh, response to that? He thought you were a little. He thought you were a little muted and a little too rehearsed and not not spontaneous enough, and probably didn't hit hard enough. Well, you know, the, the main focus of the debate for me was a question about what about Romney Care and Obamacare and their overlap, and uh, you know, I tried to keep the focus initially on Obamacare, but obviously the question was directly related about you know the comparison between the two and my earlier comments on it. And since then, I said, look, I should have been more direct and more clear that you can't have a nominee who is going to prosecute one of the main political charges against the president, namely Obamacare, and have that person be a co-conspirator in developing and constructing the the program. And so that's what I should have added to the debate. I think the points that I made were good, but that uh, that answer regarding Obamacare uh, and what happened in Massachusetts was incomplete, and I should have added that. But the rest of the debate, I thought the rest of the answers, at least from my standpoint, I thought were, were good and solid. But uh, the intention on my part of it, my participation, focused on that one answer afterwards. Yeah. Well, you weren't intimidated by having Romney standing there, were you? No, I thought you know, I made the at the time, and I think it was just an incomplete answer, and I should have been more direct at the time. I made the uh, decision to focus on Obama rather than uh, any other Republicans. But when the question gets directly asked in a contrast like that, you know, I should have been more complete and more direct, and and uh, said what I just said to you a minute ago. In addition, now we've we've talked to a number of people over the last several days about. Uh, approach in this campaign. And look, it's complicated. It's ever-changing. Running a campaign, as you know with your experience, is very difficult. And it's so easy to sit back uh, where I am and say you should have done this, should have done that, and the other thing. But the bottom line is you're reacting in real time as things are are going down. And and with that said, uh, are you in the process of perhaps tweaking your approach to issues, not not your substance, because I think your substance is well formed and it's well articulated, but your approach, to, whether to the camera or to crowds, uh, to maybe blunt some of the criticism that you're maybe a little too nice and a little too meek for what is going to be a rough and tumble campaign. Well, I think everybody just has to be themselves because if you try to be something you're not, it comes across as inauthentic, and it is inauthentic. And the notion that I'm, you know, meek or weak is just not accurate. I mean, you look at people's records, not their words. And if people want razzle dazzle and, you know, uh, the loudest or most crazy commenting person in the race, that's not me. They should vote for somebody else. But if you want somebody who actually has led, who's delivered, and doesn't just talk about the, these things, but done it on taxes, on spending, on schools, on pensions, on welfare reform, health care reform, and measure strength by your willingness to stand up and change the systems and take on opponents. The first government shut down in 150 years, set a record for vetoes, the most executive on allotments and spending in the history of my state, now more than all the other governors combined. So if, if people want, you know, razzle-dazzle and more, you know, Obama-esque rhetoric, then uh, that's not me. Uh, but if you want somebody who's actually led and is a uh, somebody who can deliver and has results and is, uh, can go out and appeal in places that are purple and blue and bring them to our side and win the election, then that is me. And so it's just a question of what style people want, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, that's what I bring to the table. Uh, Governor, what's your uh, tactic going to be uh, in Iowa, where obviously you and Michelle Bachman – and and some others are quite popular and have an enormous amount of appeal. Uh, your roots in the Midwest. 
obviously hers as well. Uh, if it's you and Michelle Bachman fighting it out for those solid Tea Party votes, how do you distinguish yourself from her? Well, I think Mitt is the front runner, Laura. Uh, you know, and if you're going to be a serious president for candidate for president, you got to compete everywhere, including in these early states, and that's what we intend to do. But I think the race will ultimately come down to Mitt versus one other person who's going to, you know, the, the remaining candidates are going to winnow down to one main alternative to Mitt. And depending on who that uh, candidate is, you know, that will determine the outcome. Uh, I will have a lot to say about that. Uh, we're going to compete in Iowa. We have to do well there, but. No, Michelle's from Iowa. It has a, a constituency that is broad-based, but I think we can do well there. And uh, mm-hmm. coming out of Iowa, if you're, you come in a, a, you know, a reasonable finish there, that gives you some momentum going into the other two states. But we have well, to do well right. in Iowa. There's no question no, about it. Yeah, I mean, I hear you. I, I hear you on that. And look, Romney is up in most of the polls, and, 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 and yet uh, I think you know as well as I do, if you don't, if you don't win Iowa— that's that's that hobbles you early on, and if Michelle Bachman is able to win that, I mean that's something that you guys are going to have to deal with. And you know, I'm, well, I mean, you know, I'm getting my little my, the, the my little whispers that, here. Yeah, that may be, uh, but the, on the other side of it, I think people don't say, "Look at Iowa, and Mitt's not competing, John Huntsman is not competing." Uh, there's going to be some who say, "Well, what the, what's the result mean?" But I think we can do well. I think we can and will win Iowa, or do very well there. So I don't we're not mm-hmm. locked up on whether uh, you know it's a must win in Iowa. But the other thing I think people need to think about is what is that? What does the consequences of Iowa mean down ballot in the rest of these states? And uh, you know, I think you got to have somebody coming out of the, at least the first two states that's a credible national competitor for Mitt. Yeah. Well, it seems uh, it, it, you know there are all these personality clashes that we're so we're led to believe occur and are in existence in the Republican Party. I think a lot of this is fed by people who. Uh, really don't have the best interests of conservatism at heart, and they're trying to drive wedges. But one of them, obviously, is that you and uh, Bachman aren't really that friendly, and don't really. There's no love lost between the two of you. Is, is there any truth to that? Well, no, I don't think there is. I've, I've campaigned for her. I've always said positive things about her. I respect her, uh, and so you know, I'm not. Well, how does that get sort of- started? How does that get started? I don't. I don't get well, this because you have campaigned for her, and I actually saw you campaign for her. Yeah, no, I know. I know. I always say positive things about her, and so uh, we've had. A, you know, we're not. We don't hang out together. We're not like uh, social buddies, but uh, we are our colleagues and friends in Minnesota and in the political circles, and we've always had a respectful, you know, constructive relationship. So I don't know where that's coming from. Yeah, that's bizarre. Um, let Let's talk about this. Uh, the big The big event now. I know you're focusing on the campaign in New Hampshire and South Carolina, only states, Florida. But the big event tomorrow is Boehner golfing with Obama. Okay, so let's say Tim Pawlenty manages to fight the Washington U.S. Open traffic, and he ends up golfing with Obama. What what question would you ask him? Well, I think I would ask him. You know, just setting aside the political rhetoric, we got four dollar a gallon gas. We got crushing levels of unemployment. We got a federal government that's out of control. You've tried your way, and it's not working. And uh, we got people hurting all over this country, unemployed, underemployed, can't take care of their families. And what you've tried for three years isn't working. And we need to take a different approach. And I, I would put the pressure on them and make the case that you've got to uh, change course and come a different way. And I put this economic plan on the table a couple of weeks ago at President Obama's former place of employment, the University of Chicago, the home of Milton Friedman, which was a huge pro-growth, pro-investment, pro-jobs economic plan, Lord, slash business taxes, individual taxes, uh, cranked down on spending, did a health care reform, regulatory reform, and called for that energy reform. These are the kinds of things that you have to do to get the private economy going, and Barack Obama doesn't understand it. He doesn't respect it. Uh, he doesn't want to do it. And we need leaders who are going to either take him out, uh, get him out of office, or uh, be able to defeat him and bring that agenda forward. Every business person, every job provider across the whole country is saying the same thing to me every day, everywhere. No, it's is, brutal. Get, get get the government off my no. back. It's, it's, it's too just, it's, just be, it's beyond too brutal. Slow. Yeah, they're, they're saying it's too expensive, too slow, too discouraging, and you got to do things to lighten the load in terms of taxes, regulations, permitting, energy, health care, not make it heavier. And Obama did the exact opposite. Yeah, and, and the chief of staff, Bill Daly, just met with hundreds of manufacturing executives uh, in uh, in Washington, D.C., and he himself said 
some of the stuff that's out there, the regulations, are indefensible. <laughs> this is the chief of staff to Obama. So that's that's kind of where that's coming from. And, and Governor, uh, finally, like I know you have to go, but this uh, Rasmussen poll, I know it's a snapshot, but you don't come in. Are you, are you cleaning the dishes right now, by the way? Are you actually doing the dishes in the background? I hear those dishes. No, I'm in a, I'm in a cafe area that does go oh, okay. in the background. Oh, okay. I saw your Father's Day. Are you, this, is how the, this is how your family <laughs> treats you on Father's Day. Do the no. dishes, will you, Tim? Come on, let's go. Right. Come on, get it cleaned up now. I do do that. It could yeah, be, that well, could be. okay, good. Your your, your wife your not, your wife knows what time it is. All right, so you you come in fifth behind Romney, Bachman, Kane, and Gingrich. Uh, well, how do you how do you explain fifth with the fact that you're one of the more successful governors of one of the more important states in the United States? Well, if it's a national poll, I don't know if that's a early state poll or a national poll, but you know, there's, Rasmussen. That's yeah, if it's national, about 40% of the people in the country don't know who I am. So you got to consider half the people who are going to ask the question have never heard of me. Uh, so that's one variable in there. And two is a number of the other people in the race, you know, the race will win. So it's, uh, we're not saying we're going to be in the first position early on, but I think you'll see good progress as the name ID the gets better, it goes up. Yeah. So you, you, uh, you know, we're, getting, we're getting contested against people who are well better known uh, uh, than I am. Uh, in Florida yesterday, I don't know if you saw this, but Governor Romney was talking to a, a number of people and another campaign stop there, and he was joking around. Some of the folks were happened to be unemployed, and he should say, I, I, I should tell my own story, he said. I'm also unemployed, and he kind of laughed about it, and he got some laughter in the, in the crowd. Some people are saying that was out of touch and inappropriate. What's your take? Well, I think he was trying to make a joke, you know, and we all made a failed efforts at humor. And so if it really was, if it was his intent to try to make a joke or make a crack at humor, you know, it just went badly for him. Uh, yeah, I can understand that I've done that. So I think we should just cut him some slack on that one. God, you can't even take a shot at this. Come on. No, I'm just teasing. I completely agree with you. It's ridiculous that people are ma- making a big deal. Yeah, of this. It would be one thing if he was serious about it, but I mean, yeah. he's clearly trying to make a joke and it just yeah. it flat. And it's one thing way, if he so. said it, if it was one thing if he said it from a windsurfer on Lake Winnipesaukee and then made that comment. Now that would be, that would be funny. Uh, <laughs> Governor, uh, when a, the president joked about, well, I guess some of the sh- jobs weren't so shovel ready. Uh, how about that joke? Was that uh, was that well, appropriate? That, that, well, everybody told him at the time that that's you know I know he made a joke about it, but it, there's uh, much of that wasn't shovel ready. And when you make a, you're president of the United States and the, your the whole economy, much of it hinges on whether you're going to be a pro, you know, economic activity person or not. And then you make a, your your policy hinge on that kind of premise, and it's wrong. Uh, you should apologize, not make a joke about it. Well, uh, don't worry. We're not going to play that stupid this or that game with you, by the way. That was... It was really illuminating, know. wasn't it? Oh, no. Next, okay, first, here's my one piece of advice for you. The next time you're in a debate and someone does one of those dumb t- attempts to humanize all of you, you know what you just say at this point? You know, John, I appreciate the fascinating nature of this question, but... I have so much on my plate focusing on the U.S. economy. I think we can't waste a minute doing uh, having a frivolous conversation. The pe- whole place will stand up and applaud you. That's my last piece <laughs> of advice for the moment. Good advice. All right, Governor Pawlenty, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a wonderful Father's Day. Thanks, Laura. You too.